So first, we have a white canvas, right? So it doesn't come uh, blue. So you need to check the blues that you have. Now this is ultramarine blue, and it's kind of got a little bit of a, um, a purplish tint to it. Um, I don't know if y'all can see this, it's kind of starting to dry out. But um, the color that you choose is just gonna kind of set the tone for the piece. So here it is wet on my towel. See how it's kind of a purplish tone? Always dry your paint off from your brush, then go to your water, otherwise you're just gonna dirty your water really, really fast. And then um, pick up your clean water from your other trough, right? Uh, and then you can test the next color. Now this one is the um, phthalo blue. So I'm pulling it out a little bit. So I can see how that goes. Wipe off my brush. Well, that tinted that water really pretty. Clean out uh, just fresh water, just barely a little bit. And then this one is the cerulean blue. Now I think this is what I'm gonna want inside my moon, uh, but I think I want a combo. Um, I can do a combo of these two and get a color that's very, very close to what's in the picture and um, but if all you have is phthalo blue this project still gonna look uh, I mean um, not phthalo blue um, ultramarine blue this project is still gonna look amazing so this is the combo of the ultramarine with the phthalo and I'm not so sure I don't like that better anyway this is just one of the ways that you can test uh, color before uh, you ever apply and to make sure that it matches it's in this particular painting you whoops you uh, really don't have to worry about that too much um, you know it's not like we're trying to match a skin tone for someone or something so um, we're just trying to come up with a nice blue if your blue ends up being a little bit lighter than your reference photo that just means it's a little more twilight if it ends up being a little darker than your photo then that just means it's more like you know after midnight so um uh that's what you want to do so we're going to mix up the color that we want cover our entire canvas now listen this is super important if you are mixing two colors then you're gonna to wanna to mix enough to go over this entire uh, canvas. And if you like the painted edge, make sure you make, an, make enough for that as well. And, um, and then that's gotta completely dry. So don't mix up enough to do two coats because your acrylic paint, paints dry so fast that um, you know you would really rather mix it twice, okay? I mean, it may not be exactly the same color, but it would be uh, very close and you're gonna do a whole nother layer to get rid of all of the little um, white bumps from the texture and weave of your canvas. So we're going to uh, color this all in solid, uh, figure out what colors you wanna use and uh, get those together, mix them up. And uh, once this is dry and one, uh, solid color no little white dapples if you've got little white dapples you need to put another coat all right guys um, I did want to show you since we are doing uh, two coats um, I mix the ultramarine with the phthalo and uh, you don't want it to be like this thick yes that will get rid of all of these little white um, bumps of the the canvas uh, really quickly but it'll take forever to dry and it'll be thick on your surface and what you want to do is create a very very smooth underpainting so you want this you want your brush to be damp but not drippy in any way and you want to thin this out stretch the paint out a little bit and do two coats instead of one super thick coat I'm gonna get rid of some of that really thick stuff um, because I don't want Sometimes you want something to be really, really smooth, like a, you know, a boat on the ocean or, you know, if you're doing a portrait or something like that. You don't want these thick parts uh, to happen. So we're going to practice putting in um, uh, our base coat or underpainting as uh, we're just blocking this in very thinly and then... Um, 
we're going to put on a second coat. So uh, notice how much uh, paint I made. And if you put on a thin coat, it dries pretty, pretty fast. So if I put another plate on top of this one while I go and blow this dry with my hair dryer or something, then um, I can still use this paint for the second coat. Every once in a while, you'll have to go back and just get a little bit of water. Notice that the water only goes this far on uh, my brush. And I'm actually going to dab a little bit of that off uh, because I don't want to water this down too much. But I do want it to be thin and I want it to flow. If your brush is picking up paint and dragging it, then that means that the, the paint that's already there is starting to dry and you have and you're putting wet next to it so it's picking itself up in the um, wet parts sorry that's where I the brush I mixed with I just kind of rolled it on the canvas and it left some larger spots that I don't want so I am going to go ahead and paint the sides uh, as well put on my second coat and it should be a nice smooth color just like our reference photo um, I just wanted to uh, let you know that I have uh, put this first coat on and you can see that it's it's streaky and it's not uh, great and everything, but there are some tips to knowing when it's dry enough to go ahead and put on a second coat. Now, if you touch the back of your hand, not the front of your hand, the front of your hand is warmer, but the back of your hand and it feels cool after just sitting in your uh, room temperature room, it feels colder uh, to you, then it's not ready. Now, I should have shown you this. Um, if you take water and splatter it onto um, your painting, okay, and I don't know if you can see all these little splatters of water, and you take, let me get this dirty towel, fold it over so it's a cleanish side, and you take and dab it off with your um, towel or with your finger and you can see where it lifted off the paint. That means that paint was not dry all the way through. Okay, so that's a little tip. Don't go splattering on and don't try to fix this. Okay, don't try to put a little bit more paint and and uh, 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 right now because then you're gonna wet the area around with the wet paint. Let this completely dry, completely dry. And, uh, I mean, you may need to, you know, give it an hour or whatever, but just let it completely dry and then come back and put on it on your second coat and it will hide those little um, uh, splatter marks that you had on your, um, on your painting. Okay, so just to let you know, that does happen. And isn't that an interesting effect? So when you're doing a background and you want a little doppled effect or whatever, splatter a little bit of water or take a pump sprayer or something and uh, put a light coat over and you'll get those little bitty uh, uh, muted colored uh, effects. All right, class, we're getting ready to um, put in the moon and everything. You always wanna work from the background to the foreground. So uh, we're gonna put in the moon and uh, then we're gonna add in all of our trees like we talked about uh, earlier. So the first thing we're gonna do is get us uh, I got a little bit of cerulean blue, probably a little more white than I'm ever going to need. Um, a little bit of brown, a little bit of black. That's going to be our trees. I used the uh, large brush to fill in my background, but we no longer need that. Um, I'm using a small filbert. Uh, that's the one that's uh, kind of shaped like a thumbnail. And I did my uh, getting out stuff with this um, white, I mean with this angle brush. And I think it'll be great to um, come in and add that white around uh, and then just kind of spot and then add the blue to it. So we're just going to jump right in and do that. Um, I found a bucket uh, and used just a piece of chalk to trace around in order to give me a guideline. Um, you know, chalk's going to dissolve in the water anyway. So... Um, 
I didn't want the circle to go all the way around because I really like the way uh, this, you know, your mind kind of feels in the other half of the moon because it's, it's not a full moon. And so um, we're just going to paint right over that line with our brush. This is an angle brush. Go slow so that you can really follow it straight. The, um, the more you go back and forth and back and forth, it's going to look hairy instead of nice and smooth. So I'm just going to get some off of the brush there. And uh, I think I am going to go ahead and use it to go all the way around. Now, it's a lot easier to follow uh, this motion than it is to go around this way. That's kind of an odd um, movement with your hand. So just turn your canvas around. I'm going to use the uh, just the tip end of my angle brush so that it gives me kind of a, um, a shaded effect. So I can go nice and smooth around. You can always go back in and fill in any of the little lumps and bumps that you find in there, but there are a lot of lumps and bumps within the, um, the moon itself. Now, this color is so close to the background color, and we want to have contrast, so I'm going to oh, take a little more than that. Take a little bit of the uh, blue, and I'm going to take a little bit of the white, and kind of mix that in uh, to get a little bit lighter color. And I don't have any of the phthalo uh, in this color that like I did in the background. So um, you're just going to kind of dapple that in here and there just to give this um, moon a little bit different effect. You can always... Um, go back in and add more white or, um, you know, as you're going around. So we're just trying to kind of fill up the backspace. Your mind kind of tells you what that is because it's up above the trees in the dark blue sky. That's, <clears throat> what else could it be but the moon, right? Okay, so I'm done with my large uh, brush. You want to make sure you clean it off really well in your clean water before uh, you store it. So it needs to be uh, stored uh, with the chisel point nice and chiseled uh, before you put it away. And I always stand them up like this to dry uh, instead of laying flat because all the bristles can turn downward. Um, you know, different people do them different ways, so it's up to you how you want to do that. And then I'm going to use my small one. And I'm going to blend out a little bit of this um, blue um, and just kind of make some brighter whites in uh, the sky because usually with white, yellow, um, kind of the flesh colors or um, peach and things like that, you almost always have to put in a, uh, a second coat, right? To make it really white because you're putting a lighter on this uh, darker, darker surface. So, so we're just going to kind of create some little kind of cloud effects, doesn't have to be perfect. You do want to kind of fill it in and uh, blend those colors a little bit. Make some areas super bright white and then uh, soften any edges and stuff because, you know, you're not going to see any hard edges. This is the moon. <laughs> it's so far away. You can't see those details. So we're going to... Uh, Clean that up. I think I want, I'm seeing the background through. Uh, it's a little darker than what I'm wanting. So I'm just going to add a little bit more blue here and there. And, you know, you can always make more. It's just cerulean and white. So if you have any harsh edges and stuff like that, just fill them in. Soft, soft, softening. You, 
you want to make sure as you're uh, going from the water that you, you uh, dab off the large amounts of water, but also on the silver part, you want to make sure that you get all of the um, barrel. This is the barrel of the brush. You want to make sure that that gets uh, cleaned off because you'll be painting a really fine detail and whoosh, this large um, droplet of water will just rush down your brush and you know cause a big watery mess right where you don't want it. So feel free to uh, use that <laughs> um, sound effect if you want. <laughs> Just going back and forth until you're happy with it, right? Just blend, blend, add a few whiter spots here and there. Uh, you do want it to be round. Try not to go outside your uh, chalk lines. Um, if it's not perfect, look how many trees are covering it up, right? So I'm not going to make you you know, sit there and count how many trees there are or do, um, uh, you know, every, this is not, we're not trying to do a portrait of this particular, we're just trying to get the same type of effect. It's definitely a nighttime scene, definitely the moon and seeing the moon through the trees is um, kind of the best thing. I almost wish I had some of this uh, blue that we mixed from the background, but yeah, that's all dried up. Um, to kind of blend this uh, moon into, because there's a, uh, yeah, let's just see what we can do. Um, we had the, oh, I did use Mars black. Remember Mars black is warmer. Our trees are definitely a brownish black. So you're gonna want to do that. See what I did with my blue. There's a little phalo. Just a tiny little bit, guys. You just don't need very much at all. And, uh, oh, goodness. A little tiny bit of the ultramarine. Well, that came out a little more than I wanted, but this is still just a, you know, tiny, tiny bit. Um, here's the phalo, the ultramarine, and I mixed those together to make this background and then I uh, added just a touch of white to thicken it up. You don't get it exactly the same color as the uh, background you had before. That's okay, it's still the moon. It is a different thing than the background. Um, whenever I test it, I usually test it uh, on the back side to see if I've gotten uh, even close to that. And I think I want to uh, blend that a little more blue. And I don't need very much. Um, just this edge being cut off right here, um, you just really kind of want to blend that into your background so I mixed up a little bit more and just kind of given that uh, blended look like the, uh, whoops, there's some dark blue on there. I'm going to clean off my brush because I use this brush to uh, mix those colors with. There are little pockets of color and then clean with water, clean off the barrel. And I'm going to blend that darker just right in. So just kind of tap, tap, tap. You don't want any hard lines uh, in the moon, right? Oops. So <laughs> headed to the wrong blue. <gasps> okay. So we're just kind of putting in a little bit. And then uh, we're just going to soften those edges. That means my brush is clean. Uh, you can even go into the clean water only and you want to take uh, all of the water out of your brush. You want it to just be a moist brush and you're just going to barely touch the tips of the brush 
next to the painting uh, in order to blend that in a little bit. So it kind of gives us this thought of there's a shadow side to this moon. And uh, no uh, lines. You kind of want to make sure that it looks like it's round. Now, right here on this curve, I think that's going to need a little bit as well. So just kind of thin that uh, part out. Clean out your brush. Oh, too much paint there. Completely cleaned out brush. Now you're just going to soften that edge. There we go. So now it kind of looks like it's uh, going around, but it's not uh, completely uh, filled in. I'm going to hit some of these on the outer edge just to make sure. And uh, don't uh, stroke the uh, paint. Uh, don't go back and forth like that. Um, you kind of want to just dab, dab, dab. So even though it's just a tiny little hint of something going on that's different than the background, it's still going to look like texture on your moon, right? So. I don't really want this edge to be very seen. But this right here is starting to show through already. Before this uh, paint dries out, I'm going to dapple in a little bit more of the uh, blue. That edge. Get some of that dark up in there. Kind of break up the line a little bit. 